it for you. Hello and welcome to the video. Within this video guide I will take you through the process and explain my dark mild recipe. This recipe provides an easy drinking and flavourful dark beer that tastes like it is over 5% ABV but is actually just 3.5 ABV. This old style is gaining popularity in recent times so if this is new to you then you have something great to look forward to. Here is a quick look at this beer's vital statistics straight from Brewfather. This recipe, like all of my recipes, is written by me and is very tried and tested first before sharing. The recipe can be found in full within this video's description, which is underneath the video window when viewed on a desktop computer. You will also find a link to the full recipe on the Brewfather platform, which can be used free of charge with some restrictions. Let's now look at the steps required to actually brew this, with the preparation coming first. Your very first step before brewing this recipe will be to convert the recipe before ordering in the ingredients. This recipe is for 30 litres or 7.93 US liquid gallons, but using software it can be literally made to be any amount that suits you and your brewing system. I have an easy guide to doing this on Brewfather on my channel, and it is vital to realise that recipe conversion is an essential part of the process for the intended results. This is simply because the contributions from grain and hops will vary, but thankfully conversion is very easy. Do note that this applies to all recipes you will obtain from others, not just mine. Because the main ingredient of beer is water, it is recommended to tweak water chemistry for the best of end results. Here is my suggested water profile for this recipe, which is available in Brewfather. Brewfather has an easy system where you can enter your own water profile and select a target profile like the one shown here. After this, Brewfather will advise on the additions you should use. Obviously, if you're not using Brewfather, you can still use this profile just by entering the values shown on screen. Ok, let's get brewing. Here I am using the Brutals brewing system, but this recipe can be used with any brewing equipment via conversion. This process starts by adding our grain gradually into the preheated strike water, being sure to stir as you go. This process is very, very important to get right and be thorough with, because everything that goes from here will be based on your mash success. The steps to this success is to be sure that you break up all of the grain, ensuring that you have no clumps and that every grain is wet. Shown on screen now is the mash profile for this recipe. This is a little higher in mash in temperature than the average mash temperature to gain a little extra body. The difference is quite slight, but this is the way to go for this style. Some actually prefer a higher mash in temperature for this style as far as 70 Celsius or 158 degrees Fahrenheit. My suggestion is to brew this one as shown here first, and if you want more body you can mash higher the next time, and perhaps consider a yeast with a lower attenuation rate if you really wish to boost body as high as you can. However, I have found that for most people's taste this recipe will work very well as is. Let's now take a look at the recipe. Mild recipes are never complex, but this simple beer approach certainly has a lot of merit when it comes to something that is easy drinking, and yet still flavourful. As you can see, this is a 3.5% ABV beer with a middle of the rose BUGU ratio, so as such it is neither bitter nor sweet or dry, which I believe is why this is a style that is hard to dislike as such. The grain bill starts with Palau as its main fermentable at 78%. If you would like to spend the extra, then certainly go for Maris Otter or a similar flavourful special malt. I consider this well worth it, and frankly this recipe is very cheap, even if you go for a more expensive option. Next up we have two different crystal malts, mine are at 120 and 75 EBC in colour. If you cannot get exactly these, then simply go as close as you can, without going much lighter or darker. The idea being that you will gain a blend of caramel flavours that will add in a little residual sweetness and toffee too. In addition, these will add in colour, aroma and body, along with some extra head retention. These flavours are then boosted a little with the use of chocolate malt. Personally I prefer to use a dehusk version which will remove any astringency, but you could also use the husk version and simply add the chocolate malt in the last 10-15 to 15 minutes of the mash. This will add in a nice coffee and chocolate flavour into the background. And then finally we have black malt at 2%. This used to be known as patent, and when used in this amount within this grist, it is mostly going to add in some extra dark colour, though those with a fine nose or taste palette may detect some cocoa in the background. After performing both mash steps, I raised the grain basket and did a manual sparge across the entire grain bed to rinse out the remaining sugars held. The important aspect here is to do this evenly, and whilst I am sparging, I have the brewing system set to heat up to boiling temperature to save time. 
Once at boiling temperature, a beautiful dark head of protein had formed on top, as you can see here. This is something that you really wish to keep within the recipe, so simply stir it in at the start of the boil to allow it to drop, rather than removing it as some brewers do for some recipes. This is simply done to avoid a boil over, which trust me, is never fun. Personally, I really enjoy this part of the brew, and as you can see here, this looks like a big vat of coffee at this point. Let's now look at the boil details. As you can see, I've gone with a 30 minute boil, and once the head was cleared, I then started the boil timer and added the first hop addition. This is then well stirred in so that the hop oils are nicely within the brew and the hop debris can join the rest of the trub at the bottom of the brewing system. This brew has a total of two hop additions, both of which are East Kent Goldings. Other British hops will also work, but East Kent Goldings are probably going to be the easiest for people to obtain worldwide, and they impart soft flavours and aromas of lemon and apricot, as well as being a little earthy and spicy. The collective impression for some is often described as marmalade-like. East Kent Goldings actually have one of the longest hop lineages and were first introduced in the UK in 1790 and are a long-standing classic example of British hops. After the boil and some cooling I then transferred into the Brutals Unitank. If this is something that you are not familiar with then check out my full overview and first impressions video as shown on screen now after watching this video. Just like the Brutals brewing system it is a very seriously sexy piece of brewing hardware. Here is some footage of this transfer. Here I added some of the wort first and then pitched my yeast and followed with more wort on top. Personally I use Fermentis SO4 with this recipe and enjoy its fruity and floral esters. This yeast should be easy enough to pick up worldwide, but if you are struggling to obtain it then go with whichever British yeast you can obtain. Just make sure it has some esters. I suggest using SO4 with regular fermentation rather than with pressure as we really want all esters and aromas from the yeast to be present. I suggest using 18 degrees Celsius or 64 degrees Fahrenheit for the core of the fermentation and when you see that the yeast is closing in on those final gravity points start ramping up the temperature at 1 degree Celsius per day until you hit 21 degrees Celsius which is the equivalent of 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Within the Brewfather recipe I show this first temperature as having a time period of 7 days. Please do keep in mind that this will vary but it is not unusual for a fermentation of this type to be done far quicker, so I've shown this on screen also here. Fermentis SO4 for me has a very minimal lag time and ferments pretty hard. If you usually use an airlock for your fermentations then you may wish to consider a blow off for this one instead. The video shown is actually early fermentation. Enough said. Let's now move on to the pour and tasting. Here is a look at the finished beer via the Brutals Unitank. As you can see this beer has a nice brown colour to it on entry to the glass which settles as dark within the glass subject to lighting. So now you know what this looks like let's dive into my tasting notes. This beer has a very inviting aroma that is very caramel and toffee based some of which is sweet. With flavour on entry you are met with dark malty flavours that then expand into sweet caramel and toffee in the middle followed by a soft yet dry finish that has a slight roasted malt tone to it. Certainly with a beer of this type the flavour profile will vary as you make it down the glass which at points will also include chocolate and coffee background notes. The emphasis here is very much malt driven but there is also a small yet noticeable contribution from our East Kent Goldings hops in the aftertaste which at points can add a little honey and spice. In terms of notes for a very low ABV beer this recipe certainly presents much more complexity than those new to the style might expect. Due to its low alcohol and interesting flavour variation, this is one that many will enjoy several glasses of during an evening without the usual alcoholic effect. Certainly if this style is new to you, then you're in for a very nice surprise. The overall impression here is that this is a low alcohol beer style with very high drinkability that I would say packs much more flavour than any other in its alcohol range, and also holds up well against other dark beer styles that also have more alcohol too. So there is my impression of this recipe. Please do let us all know what you think once you have brewed and tasted the end results for yourself within the comments section of this video. I do hope that you found this video useful, informative and interesting. If so, why not consider liking and subscribing. For further support you can join the channel's Facebook group and if you would like to support the channel then check out the channel's merchandise store as all profits go back into the channel. Until next time, happy brewing!